We're live. Welcome to a and Live, where we're going to talk about many different topics of things that you are experiencing. And today, we're going to talk, we're going to be talking about how to make the most of working from home. And with me in this incredible live video, we have here um, Dr. Torben, Arnaldo, and Nicole. We have here on my computer things that started popping up with this video, and I need to silence it so you don't get the feedback. So where are we? We have here on my computer things that started popping up with this video, and I need to silence it. They're still talking, and I don't know where it is. Where are we? I managed. Fantastic. It was a secret video that was coming through. So let me let me start from from the from Dr. Torben. He is a psychiatrist, associate director of health ministries at the General Conference. And he is gonna be talking about some serious stuff today, how you can uh, survive by that, <clears throat> keeping your mental health so that you don't want to end the life of the people that are in your home. <laughs> then Arnaldo is next. He has a uh, he's been working from home for years. So this is nothing new to him. He's been preparing for this very well. And I'm sure he has many techniques that he uses on how to make this happen. And then we have Nicole, who works at Adra. And she does amazing things at Adra. She's going to tell us about that in a moment. And she's been forced to work from home. And she has children and lots of things to do at the same time. We're also going to be talking about the campaign that Adra launched, Every Child Everywhere in School. And right about now, every parent agrees with that campaign wishing that their children could indeed go back to school. <laughs> Nicole, let's start with you. How many children do you have? And, and tell us a bit how you've been struggling in the last few weeks. I'm sorry. Go okay. Go to me. So uh, thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. So I, uh, like you mentioned, I am working with Adra. I have two children. My daughter is going to be four in a couple of weeks, going on 34. And my son will be seven in June. So I've got two children. And, you know, it's been a very interesting last few weeks being home with everyone in close quarters every day, all day. All of my days are running together and times and um, just sort of navigating that space has been very interesting and trying to engage them in things outside of just electronics and, you know, just trying to find creative things and fun things for them to do. So, and then still, of course, maintain my work. And um, so it's just been interesting trying to navigate that all. Yeah, I'm sure it's very, been very interesting. Um, Arnaldo, you've got a, a very young child there. How old is Ollie? My son is three, three years old now. And uh, as, as almost as three years old, he's very energetic, runs around the house all the time. And um, this week to make things, to brighten up things, he, he fell off and cut a little bit his chin. We had to rush to the hospital, worried about this pandemic. And do we go to the hospital? Do we not go to the hospital? Because, well, hospitals is, would be a place we expect people with coronavirus to be. So it was a struggle. We made it there. We're back. And half an hour after he was running here again. So, yeah, so he's a very energetic little boy. And how has he been coping with, with being just at home? Well, some well, mentioned he, that I've, he broke his chin. That's how he's been coping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, you said I've been working from home for years, and you may think that, oh, you, you're used to this, you are prepared for this. But... Uh, well, my routine itself hasn't changed much, but my wife's and my son's routine has changed. So that impacts my job on a daily basis. So now I have to divide my attention in coming to sort out things here in the projects I'm working on. And he comes to show me a toy or he wants to draw with me. Or he comes to tell me that lunch is ready. So it's, it's, it's been quite a challenge having to manage all that. Well, um... Torben, tell me about the importance of routine at this moment, because that's what's being uprooted, right? Days turn into each other. So Monday turns into Tuesday, which turns into Wednesday, and you don't know any longer because every day is exactly the same. And the routine is so similar. You know, you wake up, you go to the same place, you get 
you know, some people started getting dressed even when they are at home as if they're going to the office. Is that a good thing or not? And how do you establish this new routine? Because we thought this was going to be two weeks, right? Two weeks yeah. at home. It's going to be terrible. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. And then now it's three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. And we may come back to work before the second coming of Jesus. <laughs> how do you reestablish that routine? Well, I think like we have to develop new routines because usually most of us, uh, we go to the office to work and then we go home and have time off and it's the weekends. So for some of us, like it, it's like developing the routine, figuring out how to do it. Also, I'm thinking that that may take some time until you figure out something that works for you where you can like uh, be able to work sort of fairly efficiently, get the work done. Meanwhile, you take care of the other things. And I think there's no sort of no recipe for like one way to do it. I think that we have to allow ourselves to to some time sort of to figure out what works for me, whatever context sort of Arnaldo and Nicole, they, they have kids running around. I. I'm in this house alone and I've been here for four weeks almost. So that, that affects sort of how we we go about our days. That like are very different kind of challenges people are, are facing. Yeah. So I think that that's sort of and I think it's just like important to allow yourself some time to figure out what works. It's it's a will be a learning curve for us all, I think, to to make this work and then Sort of don't expect it to work perfectly every day. Sort of, I think there will be some days, and I realize that for myself. Some days I work well, I'm productive. Other days, not so much. Yeah. And I think this is this is really an unusual, exceptional time we're in the midst of, and like nothing is going to be normal in, in this. Or well, many things will not be normal because it's not normal times we're living in. Absolutely, Nicole, you had to step out because. Your children needed food. How are you dealing with, you know, being a mom and, and taking care of the house and taking care of the children and the shopping? How do you decide who goes out into the real world and the dangerous, you know, virus infested world to buy the groceries and bring it back home like a hero? How do you work all that out in your house? Well, you know, I, I, I wash my cape daily, so I, I take my cape with me. <laughs> um but I, for me, I love what the, uh, Dr. Torben is saying is because I had to figure out how to develop what works best for me. So it's just, this is our, what I've had third week going into this, or I don't even know, everything's running together. So you see what I'm saying? I think it's our fifth week now. I don't even know where I am, but I, I figured out for me, what works is, you know, doing some of my work in the evening after my children go to bed. So I can be a little bit more present with them during the day. So I, I'm trying to navigate that and work with my team members to let them know, like, I apologize. I'm going to be firing off emails maybe late into the night or maybe very early in the morning, depending on, you know, how just so that I can be a little bit more loose throughout the day. And I'm learning to let myself off the hook. It, you know, yes, I want to develop a routine, but some days you know, we're going to get to the homework and some days we're just not going to do it. And it's, you know what? It's okay. Cause we're all trying to just make it. And so I don't want to get too crazy. So I'm like, you know, I know I have to get my work done, but I've set the, I'm going to try to set the parameters with my team to say, okay, this is when I can like really be all in. And, you know, during the day when I'm trying to homeschool and figure out, you know, showing him how to add and subtract. That's just where I am right now. I may not get to that email as quickly, but in the middle of the night, you might be, I might fire off a lot of emails. So I am learning that. Now, as far as going out to the grocery store in, in my house, it works best for me to go. Otherwise, if I send my husband, I might get like six phone calls about what <laughs> aisle stuff is on. So it's like, you know what? I don't have time for that right now. Let me get my mask on and I'm going to the grocery and getting what I need and coming home. It's just easier for me. So Fantastic. that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly how you feel. And here, um, my wife decided that I'm the one that needs to go shopping. <laughs> and I have successfully complied. Happy wife, happy life is the photo okay. of my life. Smart man. So 
so uh, some things happen. I, I think I've gone like four times. And when I go, I, I'm very efficient with the shopping. So I calculate, you know, I'm going to go every 10 days. And so I come back with a car full of everything. And then we, you know, pack it up in the house. And I've, I've gone like three, four times. Every time I left an item in the back of the car that should have been in the fridge. Every single time. So the yesterday or the day before when I went, I asked Amy, my wife said, look, I'll put the food away. It's fine. Just please check the car. <laughs> go and check, see if I forgot something there. Um, Arnaldo, let me go back to you when it when it comes to, to this working with teams because we all of us work with teams. You are a project manager. You work for various companies and you lead teams that are scattered across the world. So freelancers that in general, also work from home in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, in America, and yeah. in South America. Yeah. How have there have you noticed an improvement in their deliverables? How have you noticed this um, this crisis has impacted their work? Well, it seems that people have more time now because they are they are home. They have access to their computer all the time, and they they have nothing to do, and they tend to focus on their work. So for me, for the projects I've been working on so far, uh, maybe I'm fortunate. I don't know. I haven't. I don't. I don't have a group of project manager who I I currently share ideas and experiences with. But uh, they they have been very productive, and uh, of course they they are each one of them dealing with their own problems. I one of the team members last week I was speaking to him. He helps us with uh, social media marketing strategies. And he has, I gave him something new to do. And he said to me, listen, I'm sorry. I, for the next two days, do not contact me because as Torben was saying, he's also has been alone in his house for four weeks. He hadn't stepped out because where he lives, he can shop online and it's delivered at his door. So he hadn't been anywhere. So he said to me, I'm going out for a couple of days. I'm, I'm going to risk get on a bus. He lives in Portugal. I'm going to live a uh, risk getting on a bus and going to a friend's house. And I have to do to do this for my own sanity. Uh, but overall, they, they have been quite productive because they, well, they are all at home and they don't have many distractions. And uh, most of them are youth, so they don't have kids. And um, so they, they don't have the problems that Nicole and I do. Um, so, yeah, it's, I see. it's been good one. Well, We've got people from Ghana, we've got people from Jamaica, we've got people from New Jersey. New Jersey is a place that has been, it's pretty close to New York and has been quite severely um, uh, burdened with with the outbreak of the virus within the U.S. setting. Uh, Torben, let me come back to you on anxiety because, you know, Arnaldo was describing this, I can't, this is my environment, I can't leave here and... and is there a point where you go, um, what do I do now? Because I'm anxious. I don't feel well. I, I feel, you know, thoughts uh, that are not healthy. And I'm, I'm drawn to all of my addictions. And, you know, that kind of, of, of bad place, if you will. Um, how do you avoid getting there? And if you're there, what do you do? Well, I think it's very important to be intentional about what we do with our time. Like I know this, this friend, like staying isolated for four weeks, that's really a risk factor uh, mentally for, for having issues. And I think it's very important to try to prevent as much as possible, like take measures uh, so like we don't get into those desperate situations and it may it may feel like they're like well I am doing fine I don't need why why do I need to talk with someone why should I talk with someone every day I'm doing fine why do I need to go outside sort of I'm I'm feeling okay I'm not having any problems but sort of it's like when you're really starting to suffer that's that's then it's, it's a bit late well it's not too late to do things like if you if you're in that position that you realize well now now i i don't sort of this is not my good old self anymore then of course um uh, there, there's many things that you can do but I, what i would like emphasize is in the routines not just sort of to build out like a work schedule but to include like positive content that are out that is outside of work and especially staying in touch with other people 
uh, people that that are important to you. It can be your colleagues, that's a good thing, but friends, family, other people for your own sake and for their sake to be intentional about that. Uh, so that that's something I'm trying like to make sure and that's all I recommend like every every single day make sure that you're talking with someone uh, not just because you have to because but because you appreciate that contact uh, it's something that is meaningful to you uh, another thing that sort of I think for me has been a strategy has been to make sure I get out of the house every day uh, like I can do that in in my sort of where 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 we're at sort of it, it's still allowed to do that sort of some some people don't have that privilege. Um, sounds strange to say it's a privilege to go outside <laughs> your own house, but these are the times we're living in. Yeah. Um, but still, I, I do that sort of whatever that's do. If it's going for shopping, going for a walk, going for a run, exercise going outside gardening that kind of thing to make sure like that you break that monotony that otherwise you could have in if you just go around in inside in in your house so i think that sort of take preventative measures sort of even though you don't feel that you absolutely need it do it still like think through what is our good measures for me in order to, that that i can do as well as possible and then do them on a consistent basis. I think that that's very important. And then then you ask sort of, well, what do we do if we, we are starting to struggle? Well, I think then then like then you need to, to be in touch with people. Uh, and that can be like the social support network friends that is is supportive. But then also like if you're struggling more, then then contact a health professional, your physician uh, or someone else who would be the ones who seek to, you can seek counsel from uh, about what to do. So don't don't just sort of wait it out. Sort of if you're struggling, do something about it. Excellent, Nicole. Let me come back to you on um, a very practical a very practical way that you can. That you can help that can help you to thrive in in this situation which is sleep how are you doing with sleep are you able to get the time that you need or how is your discipline of of sleep and have you noticed you know that it goes up and down and how do you have been managing that well i have to say that you know um my my sleep pattern uh, prior to COVID-19 probably wasn't the greatest. And now post it's probably worse because like I was saying to you earlier, I'm, I'm trying to manage my schedule in a way where I can sort of, you know, homeschool and still work. So I'm sneaking in, you know, hours in the, in the evening for maybe like, you know, eight to 10 ish. So I try to get to bed by 10 if I can. And then I try to get up a little bit earlier so that I can, you know, respond to other emails before the workday starts. And so I'm tr my, my goal nightly is to get at least seven hours of sleep if I can, uninterrupted, you know, um, and then, you know, just get that quiet time. I think it's important for, for people that particularly have small children is to have that quiet time. I've always been very regimented where it comes to my children with them having a bedtime. And I know that some people, you know, do it differently, but I found for me what, what works best, even if I'm not physically sleeping, just having the quiet time in the house really helps me. So, you know, my kids know by 7 30, 8 o'clock, we're kind of winding down so that we can, you know, go to bed. So even though we're work, we're, we're working from home and we're not going out to school, I still have kept them on that same routine. And so yeah. that helps my house to be quiet. So that my, helps me to kind of be in a space of wusa. I can like think. At I can try, yeah. So even if I'm fully not sleeping, I'm still in a place where I'm not like trying to, you know, I'm not very ha hazard with all the kids running around doing different things. So that's what's worked for me, keeping the kids on their sleep routine so that I then can have quiet time and then get to bed at a decent time. Let me tell you something that I've noticed here at, at home. 
we have tried to create some kind of routine, especially for them. And and it's so far working. You know, the the in the evenings we watch something related to worship, um, and they go to sleep by nine o'clock. They need to be, you know, lights out and ready to to sleep. Obviously, at half five six o'clock in the morning, they're they're up. And then comes the second problem, which is what do you do with devices? Because we've got devices coming out of our ears. You know, we have a, a factor of 1.3 device per person in this house, which means that they all have access to them, and we need to be careful with how much time they spend on those devices. We notice that um, by the time we wake up, even though they've been awake for 90 minutes, they play Minecraft. So when they come to breakfast, they're already exhausted because the, the it's, it's very – mentally challenging and and they're tired already and the day hasn't even begun and of course games like that produce a lot of dopamine so you know Torben can talk about that in a moment but by the time you get to sit down and read a book and get the little that produces a little bit of dopamine but it's not enough to motivate if you've spent two hours playing video games you know you're absolutely insensitive to to dopamine now because you know you just had a high exposure of it, and then boring things become impossible for you to do. And this leads me to the most difficult thing I've had to experience so far, and that is the Sabbath. If you're watching this, this is a, the, the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we take the Sabbath pretty seriously. You could say that. So from front sunset Friday, we stop all of our activities, and we, on Sabbath morning, Normally, we go to church, we worship, we come home, we eat because eating is good. Amen. Um, Amen. In the afternoon, we have whatever it is that we have. But that's the rhythm of a Seventh-day Adventist. And if you're a Christian, you would have the same rhythm, uh, e even if you worship on, on Sunday. But it's not the same because typically you go to church. No, Seventh-day Adventists stop everything on that particular day. Now, for four weeks now, in this last Sabbath, it really hit, maybe even longer. All I want to do is go to a building with lots of people that believe the same thing I do, put some music on, and sing. That's all I want to do. But I cannot do that. So I think that we are going to discover that when we finally start going back to church, I hope it happens soon, that people will actually sing. Because we've been so deprived of that experience for a while. And Torben, this weekly routine, does it have an impact? Not just the daily, but the weekly. And and what can we do now that we don't have it? And I know I keep asking you that question because, you know, you've got a lot of experience in helping people not get to a bad situation if they're there getting out of it. So I'm, I'm relying on you for that. So... Is it important to have this weekly routine? And what can we do if it's being totally shifted now? Yeah, and I think it's important again, sort of in this time, like I think like monotony, things become this, everything is the same. It's killing us. Uh, and and as you say, like we, we struggle, or which day is it? I you said some that uh, it's the third week the office is closed. You said this a fifth. I thought it was the fourth week uh, the office is closed. So like we get all confused, and that, that sort of there's no markers of of anything. So where where are we at? And I think that that is really I think a good thing also, like to keep the the work week and the weekends and the Sabbath still make these days different uh, also for your kids for your family what it is so that sabbath still is something special um, so what do you think dressing differently eating differently what else well again i think that that sort of depends on the family and what your traditions are i think again is so let's, let's throw it back to the guys that are listening if you have something that you do differently on the Sabbath or a special day that you have during the week, please write it down wherever you have the comment so that we can all learn from you and have ideas from the, the community, not just the four of us, but the larger community that is listening to this to this broadcast. Please continue, Torben. Sorry. I would, would I think one thing, especially like if you have a family, if you have kids, like for kids, what trumps everything is is contact with parents like do you have this connection time it's better than devices 
sort of for the kids really it's better than device it may not be what they sort of uh, if they become sort of addicted to the device as most of us are uh, then sort of it may be difficult to get them off of it but really time for real connection talking together reading stories that kind of things it's it's sort of it's it's a fundamental need for the child sort of basically with almost whatever age if it's a one year or 15 year old child there still is this need for connection with with the parents and i think that that is an opportunity that we have now even more than before maybe where we can take this off so i think in one way if you would try to get something positive out of that what we could do to take this time is to experiment sort of for the future so what works for my family how can we really make these days special um, and especially i think the challenge can be like the sabbath and sunday if that's not a work day for you um, and i would recommend it shouldn't be also i think for us also it's we need this break from work also uh i'm not just talking about the kids but but uh, as 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 employees or independents or whoever we are uh, we need to make the days being different from one another that will make you more motivated and more energized also when you go back to work so like i think the Sometimes when, when we're not able to keep up or if we're struggling, then sort of we, we just spread work out over the whole place. Um, and I think that's, that's important not to do that also during the daytime, not sort of if you can have sort of an allocated this part of the day is my work time. The rest so allocated is time and allocated space. Is that what you're saying? Have a, a place where you work and a time where you're going to do your work. If you can, I like in, in my house, I have a room that is a home office and I use it only for work. Uh, now, sort of when I go in here, it's for work. Uh, it, it's a nice room. I, I could sit here and, and talk with my family and friends and, and do other things. But I, in, I'm intentional about not doing that. So, so I sort of associate this place with work and the other places I have with not working, with being times of rest, uh, at least in relation to work. Are now Can I make a comment? You? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment here because it's one thing that I hear quite often is that, oh, you work from home, you're a very lucky person. You do, you pretty much can do whatever you want, anytime you want, you, you are free, you don't have to go anywhere. But this is very tricky because there is a, uh, if you are a workaholic, there is a big temptation that you want to be working all the time. And as Dr. Torben said, I relate to the fact that it's very important for you to have a routine, for you to have a schedule. And for me, for example, that I work with several different projects, I try as much as I can to say, okay, from eight to 10, I'm gonna work on X, Y, Z project, and from 10 to midday and so on. And Friday afternoon by 3 p.m. latest, I close my computer. In fact, I, I shut down my, my computer and I will only touch it Saturday night unless I have to do something for church. But it, it is very important for you to set boundaries, set rules. And we also have a dedicated room in our house, which is our office. Um, and when I need to concentrate, I just close the door, say this is working time and that's it. So we, it's important to make that separation. That I'm working now and now this is not time to be working. This is time to be eating with my family. This is time to sleep. This is time to go for wh whatever you decide. But it is important for you to set that schedule to have a very clear idea of where you are, wh where you are, what you should be doing, and when. Let, let me tell you something. I have not been doing that for ten days. In the last ten days, my routine and my discipline has been zero. I am working constantly. You no, know, and I'm I'm in a meal, and I've got my phone, and I'm dealing with stuff, and and then I'm here, and then I'm there, and I realize that there's nothing to do with the urgency of the work. I am absolutely addicted on a biological level to my phone, and and this is a problem that I'm going to have to fix, and this conversation is being very helpful for me to realize this and say no, it's not worth it. This is going to have an effect and it's not going to be good 
So before it gets to be very bad, I need to have the discipline to to let it go, even to allow the phone to stay in one part of the house and for me to be in another part of the house, which doesn't happen often. But I, I want to come back to something that Torben said about the children and, and parents. It doesn't matter what my children are doing on any of the devices. I have three boys, 10, 8, and 5. <laughs> and, and are you sure? About, uh, it lost the symmetry, you know? It, it used to be, you know, 10, 8, and 6. And uh, not that it used to be six because he hasn't gotten there yet, but you know, I mean, it was two, 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 and then now it's broken. But it's going to go back to to six in July. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter how many, how long they've been on a device or what they're doing. If I come to them and I say, guys, boys, let's go play outside, mm -hmm. because they know I will be with them, the devices drop immediately. It does not take two seconds. However, anything else that we ask of them, it's not such a, a visceral, happy response. Uh, so studying, and we, we force them to put uniforms on every morning, even though they're working at home. So they feel like, okay, this is school. Uh, but the, the parent connection, the opportunity to play with daddy is, is something that they cherish very, very much. So I resonate with what you're saying. And I, I just need to do it more. I need to set more times during the day, and and if I need to schedule it, I, I will. Nicole. Yeah, I I think uh, it was Arnaldo that just said this that the danger I find with working from home is that you don't stop. So typically, my work schedule when I'm in the office is I'm on a, a four day work week, a Monday through Thursday work week, and Fridays are generally the days that I I don't work. But now I'm finding that I'm on like a five day work week. I'm getting you know, people saying, hey, let's schedule a meeting for Friday at 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock. And hey, yeah. let's, and I'm like, and I'm, the, the meetings come through and I'm like, accept the meeting, accept the meeting, accept the meeting. Cause I'm like, well, I guess, you know, this is what you do. But I think you're right. I think we do need to be more intentional about saying, hey guys, yeah, I mean, I know we're working from home now and, you know, we're around a little bit more, but we do need to build in that time to say, you know, we don't want to necessarily have to have a meeting every single Friday. I mean, there's some things that you just can't be avoided because, you know, it's just nature of, you know, what we do. But when we can, I think that we should sort of stick to as closely the work schedule that we've had all along so that we can just continue to maintain that time with our family and do the things around the house that we want to get done and things like that when we were, you know, similarly in the office. So I, that was a great point about setting those boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I as you were saying, I looked at my calendar here, and this is now the third Friday that we have meetings on Friday, and we okay. have a, a Monday to Thursday work week, and we already do fifteen at least I do fifteen hour days during those times, and and suddenly we run out of time to put Zoom meetings, and now I look and I see this Friday there's another. It's called the Three Angels Messages Committee, uh, and if you're confused about this, it's fine. But if my colleagues at the General Conference are listening to this, that the global headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church stop scheduling meetings for Friday. Amen. <laughs> Here is my plea. Torben, you wanted to say something. Yes, I think we're talking about, I think what we, like how do we establish good routines and get the things done that we know we need to do. I think for many of us, it's sort of getting the work done or like like we we tend to sort of we're uh, attracted to work so so if if we're not intentional about not working we'll find ourselves uh, looking at the emails or whatever it is but there's all these other things family time meal time devotional time sleep time exercise time if you struggle to sort of get those things done, one thing that I found myself and sort of I recommend it to others is like put those things in your schedule. Don't just have the intentions of doing them, but actually put them in your schedule physically in your calendar uh, because that also does something with you mentally. Just I have experienced that myself. Uh, when the things I struggle with, if I put it in my calendar, the chance that I will actually do them is much higher. Uh, and I think this is especially like if you are living together with people, schedule downtime, schedule meal time, schedule devotional time, and 
let everyone know and inform that this is what's going to happen. I think that gives structure also to the family, to the kids, everything. They know that sort of at five o'clock, it's dinner time. We know that that's going to happen. That creates like structure to the day. And that's, that's I think, is very beneficial. Uh, yeah. So all these things, if you struggle with something, and also sleep, I'd like put put it in your schedule, actually, when you should sleep. Also, that's Hmm? Put it in the calendar. Yes, yes, yes. Put like, like I'm sleeping from ten to six or whatever it is. So it's I, I think for I found at least for myself those kind of things. Uh, it helps me to get those things done. Let me see how. And I'm that's doing a great point. Oh. That's a great point because you know what I found my kids were doing. Um, you know. Every, every time I turned around, they were in the kitchen, going in the fridge, trying to grab a snack. It, and I finally had to say, OK, wait, when you're in school, I know that we're not doing all this going to the refrigerator, eating. You, you know, you get one lunchbox with a snack in there and that's what you eat. So I had to start developing, OK, breakfast is at this time, lunch is at this time and dinner is at this time. You know, because otherwise I was becoming a short order cook. I was in the kitchen every couple of, you know, mom, I want this. I want that. It's like, wait, wait, no, we need to develop a, an eating routine so that, you know, because I also am working. So I cannot be, you know, back and forth in the kitchen. So, yeah, I, I, I like that idea of just scheduling everything and communicating to your family what the schedule is so they know. So my daughter will tell you now, mommy, what time is lunch? One o'clock, right? Yes, it's one o'clock. So make sure you eat your breakfast and you'll be not be hungry. Mm -hmm. I would say one more thing also that I think can be very good is like to plan something nice for every single day, whether it's for your family or you for yourself, that you have something that you can look forward to and that you know sort of this is something nice I'm going to do for myself or together with someone else uh, today. Sort of that, that sort of can be very individual what that kind of thing would be. Uh, but also maybe especially like being intentional about planning the weekends also so it's not just a black hole coming up uh, but the kids and the family knows like when Sabbath comes these are nice things that we're actually going to do uh, and sort of then so there's something to look forward to so we are very much I think as human beings we are if we need good things to look forward to that keeps us going, that keeps our motivation up, that keeps our resilience up. Uh, also, when things can be a bit difficult. So like being intentional about that, uh, that that also things that are doable and many good things that are good doable can be like to cook something together, uh, read something together, play a game together, watch something, that kind of things it can be a very simple thing, but just having something nice on yeah. the schedule also, I think can be good. And something that 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 creates variation. It's not sort of the same thing, uh, but, but sort of, yeah. Yesterday, I decided I was going to help cook dinner. Nice. You know it's not going to end well, right? So I, I generally, I cook. It's very good. Uh, cooking is something I do enjoy doing, and, and I do it not as well as Arnaldo, but, but quite well, too. But yesterday, my wife started the dinner, and I was just supposed to go and finish it. And it was a classic macaroni cheese and broccoli. That was it. So I, I, I see the broccoli. I said, yes, I recognize broccoli. Good. And then I look at the macaroni cheese, and it was, it was you know, cold and dry and being done already about an hour ago because she was preparing for dinner. And then I look, and there is a something that resembles a cheese sauce. So I thought, okay, I got it. I just need to put the macaroni into the cheese sauce. And, and that's exactly what I did. I heated it up. I put the cheese sauce. I mixed it. You know, boys, dinner's ready. And then they come to the table to eat dinner, and I serve each one of them. And then my eldest, who can eat forever, I don't know what where the food goes, but that boy can eat an entire fridge in one sitting. And so he tries and he goes, Daddy, I, I really don't like this. I want something else. No, son, you have to eat it. You know, eat it. And then the other one's like, yeah, I, I don't like it either, Daddy. And the other one said, I like it. And he started eating and eating and eating. Okay. I, I, I then have to decide to my eldest, what do I do with you? Do I allow you to eat something else? 
or do I force you to eat what the family is eating? So I tried some. I took some and I tried, and it was awful. And I thought, mm, this does not taste that good. What a strange sauce this is. And, and then I said, okay, you can eat something else. Later, my wife comes and says, Sam, have you seen the custard? I was doing some custard, and I can't find it. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't, awesome. it wasn't cheese sauce. It was custard. So um, we found out what happened to the custard, and we had a very good laugh as a family here. Uh, and now we understand we need to improve when we're doing team exercises in terms of cooking. Now, I'm sure there are many of these stories that have happened, and you have this. On a very serious note, families that were doing well before the, the isolation period, there is a good chance that they are more connected and they're doing much better. They were already respecting each other. They already had that sense of, of, of connection and love and belonging within that family. But there are families that were not doing well before the isolation came. There were families that were using their job, school, et cetera, to be away from the other members of their family because there was some respite to the judgment and the resentment. And then they've been forced to be together. Now, I've, I've got friends. Most of my friends are in the camp of families that are struggling but are better. But there are some that are in the camp of things are not going well. And I am not sure how conversations like this um, alone could help them. Because we're talking about the routine, we're talking about how to treat each other, etc. I want to move us to another topic. We talked about many things in the, before now. I want to move us into the importance of the words thank you and the importance of gratitude. And I, I find that this could be incredibly helpful in, in ending the resentment and the, and the unforgiving uh, household. And do you find it easy or difficult in your reality? And, and what would you say to people that find it difficult to thank members of the same house for the small things we all have to do for each other um, every day? Let's start with you, Arnaldo. Um, it's very easy to find yourself in a place where you, you, you see your wife doing something or you see some, somebody else in your house doing something and you think to yourself, and I'm talking from experience here that I've, I've thought that many times and that you, you see them doing something that you think it's their, it's their job. They have to do that. And you don't have, you don't necessarily have to say thank you. And, uh, it's very tricky. It's very it's a very big temptation because if you if you do that, it gets to a point that you you stop appreciating each other. And uh, in fact, I, I heard you saying this a few days ago in another live moment, and we started practicing this at home. And I, I started to realize how much I had to improve on this. And uh, and and now I I'm starting to understand how important this is to appreciate the little things. You know, not not only the big things, not only the things that are extraordinary but the the normal things the day-to-day -day things that okay it's it's my job to sit down here work it's maybe it's it's my wife's job to go and cook lunch but still she's doing something for the family i'm doing something for the family so it i find I'm, I'm finally understanding what i've been hearing you some saying for for a long time now that the importance of saying thank you the importance of noticing the small things on the day-to-day Nicole, uh, Torben, anyone? Yeah, I would say like, but this is a sort of general principle. I think there, there are sort of two things you need to know how to say and say it authentically if you're going to be successful in relationships. And that, that is thank you is one of them. And I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, because we, we, we need both like showing the appreciation of the other and being able to receive sort of the good things that other do to us. I think that that's absolutely essential in relationships. Um, but also like to be able to say, I'm sorry, when things go by, whether sort of you realize that 
I what I did was not nice, or it's just that the way it turned out for the other person sort of was not 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 positive. So like I think to practice those, like to be able to say those and then be even more sort of aware and conscious about the need to 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 express those and, and really mean it. Sort of this is not just these are not words to just to throw around sort of without sort of meaning them. Um, but really like to to really show truly show appreciation and to truly be take responsibility uh, when you've done things that were not okay. Because I think this is this is a time that will bring out sort of the best and the worst in in all of us. Uh, we it's it is stressful. It is di different. Uh, it's challenging, and that's that's what happens. Um, and in a sense, also, it may not be sort of that it really that it creates new problems or things that sort of that weren't there before, but maybe it brings to the surface things that actually were there already, but they sort of were a bit under the radar before we didn't really have to deal with them. So in that sort of sense, it can be sort of a blessing in disguise. Okay, these things are coming up. Let's figure out how we work with them and, and find resolution to these issues. Uh, so, and I hope that that, that really, it, it takes commitment and it will take some, it will be at times painful also to deal with that. If you don't deal with it, surely it's going to be a lot more painful later. Yes. Hmm. Nicole. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let me put a scenario to you, which happens often here. Um, as I have a tendency to work too much. Right, so I'm, I'm very obsessed with projects and getting things done and that sort of thing. And it, it, picture this: my wife comes and says, "Sam, you need to do this and the other because you said we're going to do it, and you need to." Do it. And my immediate reaction used to be, "What I'm doing is very important. It's much more important than what you are saying. I need to do, you know." In, in the house or with the boys and etc. And it's that concept of shooting the messenger, you know, that she is reminding me of something that I agreed I would do. And the easy response is to tell her to go do something else and not bother me because what I'm doing is of utmost importance. And I have encountered a story in the Bible of the lepers. You know, 10 lepers were healed and only the Samaritan leper that was healed came back and said, thank you. And Jesus says, your, your faith has healed you. Um, and that, or has saved you, it's the same word in, in Greek. And realizing this, I started having a different reaction to what my normal reaction would have been. My feeling was of disrespect and I wanted to, to speak firmly against her in this manner but i i started doing the opposite of some time ago which was to 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 shut up to, not to say anything at the moment and then later to go and say thank you for reminding me i needed the reminder i had forgotten and something magical started to happen at first i had a lot of you know the thank you to do with your thank you for reminding me it wasn't really natural like torben is saying but then she felt very respected and 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 that we, we grew in our connection. Even if I didn't truly believe it fully at first, uh, just the act alone uh, produced, I think, the right kind of emotions in me. And the next time it was easier and easier and easier. And that changed in many ways the relationship because now that was a, a constant uh, looking for opportunities to say thank you. And of course, the story that you mentioned is is also incredibly important. Have you thought of these dynamics, Nicole? And and how do you handle all of that now that you're, you know, all the time there together? So, in in, a, in full transparency, this week um, I, I was saying something to my daughter, and I said, "Just give me the book." And she said, "Mommy, you're supposed to say, may I have the book, please.'" <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> and, 
And so that that just taught me right a couple of things. I thought, okay, yes, it was a teaching moment for me because I realized I was like, our children are paying attention, right? And so you're telling them how to be grateful, and using your manners, you know, da 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 da, da and all these different things. But you know, when we're all in the house together all the time, and you're just like climbing the walls, and you're like, you know, your your fuse could be a little bit shorter. And so I think for me, what I'm learning is to um, remember that they're like eyes watching me all the time, every day, for many hours in the day. And so, you know, like I was saying earlier, just like learning to navigate this new space of you know, you know, you are not just there to um, just say, this is what I say to do and you just have to do what I say, but understand that your children are sort of internalizing and you're, you know, what you're telling them to do that they're actually saying, okay, well, if you tell me to do that, that when in the moment when you want something, then you ought to give me that same respect. And so like for you, Sam, if you're saying, okay, um, you know, you would want your wife to you hear you if you were to say something to her, you know, so it goes both ways. It's a two way street. And so I think that that script that says, you know, do unto others as you want them to do unto you, it plays into that as well. If you want that respect, you have to give that respect. And so um, that's what I'm, I'm learning like little nuggets every day. And so and it's I'm magical, isn't it? I have, we it, have about 10 minutes. I have yeah. Cynthia here, Romero, who's saying, asking my family guarantees such as how are you feeling and really being there mm. to just listen mm, not just it. how are you feeling, uh, but how are you feeling the kids respond very positively when i do it so I, I totally agree with that let's see other comments that we have here we have daniel uh, cardozo i think uh, he's watching from palmas and he says how i wish i could understand the english that you are speaking so uh, here is an opportunity for you, Daniel, to learn English in this isolation. Yeah. Uh, now he didn't understand what I said now. So at, later I'll reach out to him in Portuguese. I don't know him yet, but let's see how it goes. Um, here we have uh, Neo Adventist saying, um, now you have to work like the rest of us. huh?" I think he was referring to the general conference working four days a week. And we were making the joke about Friday. He says, yeah, now you have to be like the rest of it. Let me explain something to you. You know, the Monday to Thursday thing is no joke because, right. you, you know, you have to be in the office by, you know, Jennifer, the producer of this program, who is right backstage right now, she arrives in the office. Um, um, actually, I don't even know she goes home because I've never arrived, I don't think, only a couple of times, and she wasn't there. So it we arrive very early. Uh, I think she gets there at 6.30 or 7 or some inhumane hour like that, and we leave around, well, I don't know, 7 or so, 6, 30, 7, and from Monday to Thursday. So there you go. You clock in 10 to 12 hours a day, and by Thursday evening, I promise you, you're going to sleep really well, and you're going to enjoy that Friday off. Um, so you, you're you packing in the 40 hours, or just about, in those four days. It's no joke. So that was for you, Neil. Sam, um, Sam, here, yeah. I, just, just for the record, we're not recommending this kind of work. Uh, schedule. So this is not an example for others to follow. Uh, if you do that, so don't like to, to anyone listening. Don't do what Sam just described. That's right. Thank you. That was very important, Jennifer. You are no role model. I will stop following you. Um, so Liz Capizano, she says, "I miss worship on Sabbath." Oh, Liz, we all do. Isn't yeah. that the truth? Yeah. Uh, with my church family, we are connecting online and on Zoom, but I can't wait for the Sabbath that we open our doors and worship together. It will be the sweetest time. Okay. And can you imagine, can you imagine a year ago, if I were to tell you that mm -hmm. by April next year, no church will be meeting? No. No one would believe it, especially Adventists, because we are defiant, let's be honest. That no one will be able to stop us from worshiping. And then God says, um, you are my church. And I heard this, I saw this meme. And you had, you know, people saying, well, um, the enemy must have won because all churches are closed. And another guy saying, well, God must have won because now every house is a church. So 
the truth is every house should have been a a uh, a church in in some way with a small group or the worship that happens at home and i think that we will have a better theology as we come out of this because for many people the church was the building and when they referred to church it was the building but now we have no access to the building and the church is still thriving in its mission and we're using all technologies and people are still doing their work of reaching out to their friends and family so you know that's that's something uh, that will come from this okay we only have a few minutes there are many other comments that i can see through here people watching from all over the world um, what are your thoughts your final thoughts that you want to leave people with at the end of this video that talks about how to thrive as you work from home. Let's start with Arnaldo, Nicole, and Torben, and then I'll I'll finish with a prayer. Well, I've mentioned this before, but I think it's important just to highlight this again: the importance of setting boundaries. Boundaries, not to make uh, your work week a seven-day week, and you don't have time specific time for anything. Nothing is, is special. Uh, because everything is the same, so it's it's very important to to set times and, as Torben said earlier, put things on your calendar to make to remind you of where you should be at a certain time. It's, even times with your family, I have in my calendar. As as Torben was talking, I was revising my calendar and I have down here times for lunch and time to spend with my son. And so it, it, this is re very important. It, it serves me. It serves as a reminder to me that the, my life is not only working. So um, setting boundaries, that's what I would say. I think for me, what I'm, I'm learning is that we have been quite a busy society. Um, this, you know, pandemic has really showed me that, you know, this is a great opportunity to slow down and to, you know, reconnect with uh, friends and family, um, you know, it, it's I'm looking at it as a time I'm like don't despise this time as as it being you know we're quarantined and you know it's it's really just shifting your mindset and looking at the positive ways that you can really you know use this time wisely you know you just told someone that doesn't speak um, English it's a great time to possibly learn you know so think about all of the things that you could come out of this um you know, this quarantine in, you know, we don't know how long it would last. You know, there's theories out there, but, you know, if there's a hobby that you've always wanted to do, if there's a book you wanted to always read or write, or, you know, this is a great time to just, you know, open yourself up to learning new things and, you know, engaging in those activities. So that's what I would say. Look at this time as a, a time of positivity instead of looking at it as something that's negative. Thank you. Torben. Yeah, well, there are many things you could say. One thing I think I would say, and this is especially in our sort of relational context, because when, when like, what's most important is the relationships we have, relationships with other people and our relationships, the relationship we have with God. That is the most important thing. That's more important than our work. That's more important than our finances. That's more important than all these things, other things that we, many of us are actually quite slaves of devices, the things, things that sort of run our lives without maybe that they're not really in harmony with what our principles, our values, and our priorities would be if we sit down and reflect on them. Uh, so I think that's this is a great time to think and reflect on the kind of lives we are living. And so there, there are lots of, for most of us, there will be lots of things that come up and some of those things will be maybe tough to deal with, whether that's relational issues, whether there's personal issues, past history, things that we have to deal with. Like I find that for myself that sort of this is really a time for reflection. And I think like make sure you take appropriate time for that. And sort of you that's that's maybe one of those things it's difficult to schedule. Uh sort of I, I'm not recommending to go sort of in a constant rumination about sort of the, the meaning of life and and the purpose of being here on earth. Uh so but still uh 
when it comes up, when it comes up, when it's emotionally charged, things that are happening in your life, like then that may be what you have to prioritize then uh, and to deal with and work those things through. And not just going thinking about write about them, talk about them with someone, process whatever comes up. I think there's a potential that we can come out stronger from this crisis than we entered and that we can come out as better people and people who live more the lives that we actually want to live. Uh, and I think that's, let, let's make the best of this time also so that may happen and not just rush through everything and run away from whatever comes up. Well, Arnaldo Torben, thank you very much for joining us for this live uh, broadcast this live conversation uh, to talk about what we're all experiencing. I think it will be very fitting for us to have a chat with the one that is there in every household right now and has been. Uh, for those that have families, he's there to calm things down. For those that are alone, he's there. So you're not alone, Torben. <laughs> and I think it will be very fitting for us to talk to Jesus and and open our hearts to him Dear heavenly father this is a very special moment uh, where we can be still and focus on your voice where we can find no distractions at the same time it's it's a time that many of us are discovering that we're going from one distraction to the next as a coping mechanism Lord, we cannot wait to worship you again. But until that day comes, we pray that you may be able to help us to do the difficult things of, of perhaps dealing with situations we haven't been wanting to for years. Of reflecting on our lives, not ruminating on it, but reflecting on it. Lord, I pray that you will help us to come out of this stronger than when we entered, as Dr. Torben has said. Thank you, Lord, that you have kept us um, somewhat focused. I pray that the people that have been watching, that they will be profoundly blessed uh, by you in the next few days. Lord, we're coming, preparing to another Sabbath. Churches are trying to find the right technology. And, and we pray that you will be with those churches. Lord, we also pray that you will be continue to be with the health workers that are helping millions of people every single day and putting themselves at risk. We're very thankful for that spirit of sacrifice that resembles your spirit of sacrifice for us. Lord, for all of this, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching if you're at home. And until so next week at the next ANN Live. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.